sky in this part of the video that is part 9 we will look at the real exam questions for AWS certified cloud practitioner exam this is uh, there is a series of videos which is related to the same topic if you go through all the videos the chances of clearing the exam becomes extremely high I would request you to like my videos and subscribe to my channel for more information related to guaranteed way of passing these exams as we saw in earlier topics this exam validates the knowledge around these topics okay and the cost of this exam is hundred dollars 90 minutes now let's move to the question sets which mechanism allows developers to access AWS services from application code so the answer for this is software development kit because other options like config is used to track the config changes to your AWS resources code pipeline is similar to continuous deployment using github repositories so SDK is the right tool for this purpose you see these are the programming languages you can use in SDK and there are different sort of SDKs we have an SDK for mobile we have it for IoT devices and we also have it for monitoring and tracing you can integrate SDK with CloudWatch and X-rays. Option A is correct. Which Amazon EC2 pricing model is the most cost efficient for uninterruptible workload that runs once a year for 24 hours? So the keywords are highlighted in color. So most cost efficient. If you look at these options, the most cost efficient is reserved instances but is this most cost efficient for uninterruptible workload yes it is and is it cost efficient for workload that runs once a year no if it is just a matter of once a year reserved instances can be blocked for three years in this case on demand instances would suffice because the frequency of your workload execution is too low once a year spot instances cannot provide uninterruptible workload and dedicated instances is not the most cost efficient it is the most expensive option which of the following services is a mysql compatible database that automatically grows storage as needed so the keywords here are in color mysql compatible so this rds is mysql compatible and aurora is mysql compatible ec2 is a instance compute instance not a database this is wrong and light sale has a different purpose this is also wrong automatically grow storage rds does not grow storage automatically but aurora grows storage automatically if you see this documentation how aurora storage automatically resizes so it says aurora cluster volumes automatically grow as the amount of data in your database increases hence aurora is the right answer which vpc feature enables users to connect to two vpcs together so the keyword is connect two vpcs together among these options vpc pairing looks correct if you see this diagram there are two vpcs a and b and using vpc pairing connection you can connect these two vpc pairing connection it connects to vpcs enables you 
to route traffic using private IP4 or IP6 addresses. And this is correct. VPC endpoints, each service has an endpoint. Using uh, if you are writing API SDK code or CLI through CLI, you can access these endpoints to talk to these services. But it is this cannot be used to, for pairing two VPCs. And direct connect is basically used to provide private uh, links, private network between on premises and cloud very different purpose which services primary purpose is software version control so the keyword is colored here software version control in this if you see code commit this is used for for version control you see this documentation it it is fully managed source control service if we check cognito it is used for sign in secure sign in and access control okay so if you are on a social media platform like facebook and you see some applications they ask you whether you want to register with a new id or want to use a facebook id or a google id that is done through cognito so Cognito is not a software version control tool. Code star is a unified user interface. What it does is it helps you easily manage your software development activities in one place. It is not a software version control tool. Wrong answer. CLI command line interface. It is a unified tool to manage your AWS services. You can install this on your laptops or desktops and talk to AWS instances. Again, not a software version control tool. So we will proceed ahead marking D as the right answer. A company is considering migrating its applications to AWS the company wants to compare the cost of running the workload on premises to running the equivalent workload on aws platform so what is the keyword here compare the cost that is in color here this is a keyword which tool can be used to perform this comparison so if you have gone through my previous videos you will come to know that tco is the right answer for this tco if you see here the documentation it states it gives you the total cost of running workloads in cloud as it compares to running them on premises this is our answer which aws service provides a secure fast and cost effective way to migrate or transport exabyte scale data sets into AWS and these are the options so the keyword here is colored exabyte scale if you talk about exabyte among these options only snow mobile uh, looks correct this is snow mobile a truck comes to your premises you connect your network copy the data and this truck will go back to the AWS cloud premises and restore your data. It, it is used for huge amount of data in exabyte. This is exabyte scale data transfer. Extremely large amounts of data transfer. You can transfer up to 100 petabyte per snowmobile. It is a 45 foot long ruggedized shipping container this is snowball it is used for petabyte scale data transport it will be a box that will be couriered to your premises you copy the data and courier it back to aws aws will restore it now, aws batch 
if you want to run hundreds or thousands of batch computing jobs on AWS, you can use AWS Batch. It dynamically provisions the optimal quantity and type of compute resources. This is not used for exa byte scale of data transfer. Then we have Migration Hub. Let's look at Migration Hub. This is simply it will simplify and accelerate migrations to AWS. So it provides a single location to track the pro progress of application migration. You have suppose 100 applications. You, have, you want to track the progress of migration of each and every application. This will give you a central hub to do that. It is not used for exabyte scale data transfer. Hence our answer is no mobile. This is how it looks from inside. Big truck. And then the data is transferred to your cloud. Let's look at this one. Which of the following best describes the AWS pricing model? So the key here is pricing model. How does the pricing works in AWS? You can do pay as you go. You can save when you want to reserve. You can pay less by using more. Fixed term. This is wrong. Cloud is never used for fixed term. It is flexible. Option B looks correct pay as you go you saw in this documentation pay as you go we have to choose two options let's see between c d and e which one is correct co-location cloud never wants your team to be co-located your team can be split across multiple locations even across the globe Hence, this does not describes to the best the pricing model. C is wrong. D states plan. You never plan the capacity or storage space, etc. Cloud gives you elasticity. Okay. So, for example, in EC2, you have something called auto scaling groups. This is a collection of EC2 instances that are treated as logical grouping for purposes of automatic scaling. So what it does is it gives you elasticity. Now for your workload, you may have 10 EC2 instances today, but you may build an auto scaling group so that if the workload increases, you can scale in and scale out. So if you see here, Netflix is a good customer who is making use of AWS. Okay. And it uses multiple range of products. It makes use of edge locations to a great extent. But then you never plan. That is my point. You are keeping it flexible. That's because you never say that I will only have 10 EC2 instances. What you are saying is based on the load, if I need 100 EC2 instances, I will do 100. So that's why you will have variable cost. Variable cost defines it because today you may be paying this month, you may, you may have paid $500, but next month, based on the decrease in the usage, you may pay $200. So variable cost is also correct. These are the two right options. Please like my videos and subscribe to my channel. That will help me keep me motivated to put more videos, more information. I do a lot of research just to ensure that the information that I am presenting is correct. Why should a company choose AWS instead of traditional data center? So it is doing a comparison. Why should it choose? The first option suggests 
so the first option is saying aws provides users with full control over underlying resources this is amazon data center pictures these are the pictures this is our data center and this is the premise this is how the security is provided you never get to go inside the data center so you will never have full control over the underlying resources aws has that control they will never give you that control so what should a company uh, why should a company choose aws instead of a traditional data center so this is not a reason for that so option b aws does not require long term contracts and provides a pay as you go model like we saw how the pricing works you have a pay as you go model here hence this option is correct in aws you don't have to sign any long term contracts it's pay as you go and that gives you flexibility if you want no longer you if you don't want to continue beyond 6 months you can choose to do that on the same day there are no penalties for that so this option looks correct let's scan other options if you see the global infrastructure website of aws you will see there are 220 plus points of presence 210 plus edge locations and 12 regional edge caches there are how many countries in the world 195 countries what the document says is 210 plus edge locations these locations may not be countries the they may be different states in a country etc hence this option aws offers edge locations is wrong because aws does not offer edge locations in every country let's see the last option aws has no limits on the number of resources that can be created that is purely wrong there are still limits on the number of resources you cannot create 10000 ec2 instances so if you see this documentation it says you are limited to running on demand instances per your virtual cpu based on demand instance limit purchasing 20 reserve instances and requesting spot instances per your dynamic spot limit per region so we saw there is a limit so d is wrong hence the right option is b so which solution provides the fastest application response times to frequently accessed data to users in multiple aws regions so this the keywords here are so the keywords are fastest response times for multiple regions so whenever you see this kind of question for fastest response time it's always cloud front so cloud front provides highly secure and fast content delivery network if you see this it, it is used to deliver contents like videos etc so ott platforms like netflix use this because it gives you low latency high transfer speeds let's look at other options a says cloud trail so primarily cloud trail is used for saving the logs for future auditing perspective it's a different purpose cloud formation is used for you know infrastructure provisioning infrastructure as a code so if you have two ec2 instances rds uh, and so on and you want to deploy or you want to ensure that whatever is there in your dev box the same settings and configuration should go in the test environments you can just copy it as infrastructure as a code using cloud formation and achieve your goals okay but cloud formation is not used for fast response times across aws regions virtual private gateway over direct connect so these are just a means to connect your on premises to your aws cloud it is not used for fast response times across multiple regions 
who are your cloud front customers hulu prime video amazon prime video sky news these are all customer seven so whenever you see there is a need for content delivery these companies are into content delivery either videos or music and hence they use it which aws service provides a self-service portal for on-demand access to compliance reports so the keyword is colored here compliance reports whenever you see compliance reports you should always think of artifact as you can see in the documentation this is a central resource for compliance related information you will see compliance reports here so these are some of the compliance artifact reports let's look at other options config so config doesn't store compliance reports it has your resource configurations and it records your configurations over the period of time very different purpose so config is wrong let's look at certificate manager it is a service that lets you easily provision manage and deploy public and private certificates for ssl and tls so whenever you are doing encryption in transit so what you get is that time you have to manage the tls digital certificates for encrypting in transit and these you will store in the certificate manager aws inspector is used for automated security assessment it is helping in improving the security and compliance of applications deployed on cloud these are the benefits it identifies application security issues majorly uh, it helps with security compliance and enforcing security standards hence this option c is wrong d is the right option please like my videos and subscribe to my channel which of the following aws services can be used to run a self-managed database so database can be deployed on ec2 instance snowmobile is used for exabyte scale data transfers so route 53 is a highly available and scalable cloud dns web service it is like your godaddy so the purpose is very different and x-ray is it helps developers to analyze and debug production it is basically an analysis and debugging tool for your production systems for distributed applications you cannot host databases so only ec2 will work so if you see this documentation it says it offers multiple options to host your databases serving oltp workloads host your own managed database on ec2 instances or use amazon rds managed by aws okay what exclusive benefit is provided to users with enterprise support so the keyword is exclusive that means other support plans will not have this benefit it is exclusive it is only applicable to enterprise support so if you see this documentation exclusive you can only see these so for developer there is none business there is none so there are two training and technical account management so you don't have trading mentioned here but you have technical account manager mentioned here so hence this is the right answer how can a user protect against aws service disruptions if a natural disaster affects an entire geographic area so if you have multiple regions if suppose in this case region 1 fails you should have a region 2 so if region 1 fails then all the availability zones inside that region will also fail hence in this case the option a it says deploy applications across multiple availability zones within 
an AWS region this will not work because suppose US East one region and you have multiple AZs inside this if the region itself fails then all the AZs will fail hence A is wrong B says use a hybrid cloud computing model with within the geographic area so what it means is apart from the cloud you also have your own data center and use a hybrid cloud model but hybrid cloud model why people use because some applications are on your data center some applications are on the cloud region so if the cloud region fails then that application will not be in your data center hence option b is wrong option c suggests deploy applications across multiple aws regions yes this is right this is what the documentation also says have another region in this case eu west if this fails all the users will be directed to this region option d store application artifacts using artifact and replicate them so artifact is just the compliance reports what about your ec2 instances your databases etc so this option is not covering other resources hence d is wrong c is the right answer let's look at this question how does aws most effectively reduce computing costs for a growing startup company so if you are a startup company so you cannot afford to have your own data center and even if you are using 20 percent of your data center today because that is your customer base today but tomorrow you would need your customer base would increase rapidly and you would want more capacity so how can you reduce the computing costs in aws so the first option suggests it provides a on-demand resources for peak usage which is correct so what happens is aws like your auto scaling group if more workload comes in it will scale out add more ec2 instances so this option is correct but let's look at other options it automates the provisioning of individual developer environments it doesn't automate you can create your own developer environments so it doesn't automate that c says it automates customer relationship management it doesn't automate that d says it implements a fixed monthly computing budget no there is no fixed monthly computing budget it is not like if you are paying 500 dollars per month you keep paying that no it's variable some it's based on your usage so a is the right answer so a startup is working on a new application that needs to go to market quickly the application requirements may be adjusted in the near future which of the following is a characteristics of aws cloud that would meet this specific need so you must have seen a lot of startups okay what happens with startups is they are always uh, having a constraint on the resources uh, financially they are uh, weak they don't know if the market would uh, respond to their products or not so hence they cannot go with a heavy investment of their own data centers etc so they go on cloud why they go on cloud will they go for performance no why because as a startup they have just started and started their applications are used by few people so performance right now is not the uh, utmost uh, is not of utmost importance it is secondary in nature compared to other options elasticity so elasticity is important but not of utmost importance because immediately uh they are they are not expecting a huge amount of transaction where they will need elasticity but it is secondary in nature they would need it but it is not of utmost importance as of now reliability it is important for their applications to be reliable but if you seek agility right now when they they have just started a new application they are going to market they do not have a customer base they are looking for a customer base obviously they want their services and products to be reliable but the first most thing is agility they want agility like suppose uh, they went to market few three days they just saw 
uh, few transactions but fourth day the number of transactions increased fifth sixth seventh day it, it kept on increasing and now they want agility to add in more resources that agility is provided by aws you can they can spawn ec2 instances quickly uh, that is agile they don't have to buy resources wait for a procurement time and etc that's why agility is the right option so which aws support plan provides a full set of aws trusted advisor checks let's see the support plan so this is a support plan if you see this is your trusted advisor checks developer just has seven core checks but business has full set of checks enterprise has full set of checks that is what our question is asking for full set of checks and that's why what is the correct option enterprise and business support which of the following services have distributed denial of service ddos migration mitigation features so here waf and cloudfront are the options see i'm telling you up front i am not clear on the answers for this question uh, uh, there were multiple websites in some websites see waf, WAF was always there but in some websites we also had inspector instead of cloud front so i am not very clear and uh, i try to do some research but i'm not very clear on the ddos mitigation features it didn't come in the exam for me but uh, this is something which i would uh, leave it to you as a homework so which when building a cloud total cost of ownership model which cost elements should be considered for workloads running on aws what are the elements you would consider here from these options so here it is asking for three options so these three options are there uh, these are the answers but i'll still explain why why these answers compute costs so you know, you have to factor for your ec2 instances your ec2 are there compute uh, it, it provides you compute power so you'll have to factor for this facilities cost this is not your baby aws maintains a facility so you cannot factor the cost for facilities storage cost yes you have to decide whether how much you will store in s3 how much will you store in uh, ebs block store how much will you store in the elastic file system that is your prerogative so c is the right answer uh, data transfer cost it is not something which you would consider uh, in under the total cost of ownership data transfer cost usually comes in in the migration cost so once you, total cost of ownership is something which post data migration how much will it cost you to maintain the aws uh, cloud infrastructure uh, so that's why d is not an answer network infrastructure cost so here you because uh, you will have to decide whether you will be putting uh, using uh, vpn services or direct credit etc based on your choice you will have to factor the cost that's why this comes in the tco model hardware life cycle cost this is not your baby because the underneath hardware is maintained by aws and they would decide what life cycle they have to set for it hence these three are the right options now what is uh, amazon recognition uh, this is uh, used to automate your image and video analysis with machine learning so we have our next question on this it's saying what time savings advantage is offered with the use of amazon recognition time saving advantage so let's look at the options amazon recognition provides automatic watermarking of images so the first option is saying amazon recognition provides automatic watermarking of the images it doesn't provide automatic uh, automatic watermarking of the images it can detect the watermarking what do you mean by watermarking the logos which is there on a pdf file the company logo it may be a microsoft logo or a amazon logo etc so it will detect that logo but it will not watermark it that means it will not help you watermark the images so in order to watermark there's a combination of technologies like lambda and etc that you have to use to watermark the images or the pdf files option b suggests amazon recognition provides automatic detection of objects appearing in pictures yes this is right let's see the documentation so amazon recognition what it says is if you see this automates your image and video analysis with machine learning it is easy to add image and video analysis to your applications so this is this is the purpose okay so the, hence this answer is right so option c it says uh, provides the ability to resize millions of images no you will have to use lambda for resizing the images or creating thumbnails and etc so it's not only rec uh, recognition will not only help uh, amazon recognition uses mechanical turk to allow humans to bid on the object detection to option no so primarily it is helping you with image analysis for your ml programs so b is the right answer so when comparing aws with on premises total cost of ownership what costs are included so basically it is the data center security costs are already included uh, business analysis project management operating system administration this, this all costs you have to estimate it this is not a part of your tco uh, with on premises tco so hence a is the right answer according to aws shared responsibility model what is aws responsible for these are the set of responsibilities that has been given let's scan through each each and every option, option. 
so that's configuring amazon vpc so uh, configuring the amazon vpc is your responsibility as a customer aws doesn't do it so hence a is wrong option b suggests managing application code this is also your responsibility because you are the owner of the code and you have to do it your you means your customer your developers etc managing application traffic this also the customer has to do it because you, the customer will decide whether they want to use load balancer to manage the, the application traffic and they do they want to use a combination of route 53 load balancers and auto scaling group for ec2 instances to manage that traffic that is this is totally up to the customer aws has no control over it hence option c is also wrong option d is right managing the network infrastructure the infrastructure related to the network routers and etc wiring cabling etc everything is managed by aws that is aws responsibility you as a customer will have no role to play there that's why d is correct so this question uh, suggests which AWS tool will identify security groups that grant unrestricted internet access to the limited set of ports. So I think this is being done by Trusted Advisor. Uh, if you look at Trusted Advisor, so this Trusted Advisor, it provides you real-time guidance for AWS infrastructure, increases security and performance posture of your organization. So I think this, this is the tool where it will give you these kind of uh, checks. So AWS organizations is primarily used to consolidate your accounts and billing. It has a very different purpose. It will not help you identify the security groups that grant uh, internet access to limited set of ports. AWS usage report, uh, usage report will, it will it helps you with the cost, but not primarily with restrictions. And Amazon EC2 dashboard, I tried searching the web and did a lot of analysis, but I could not find the EC2 dashboard. But in case you find it, uh, please drop a comment. Uh, but my view is AWS Trusted Advisor will be the tool, though I am confused on this one. Uh, but I still think AWS Trusted Advisor should be the tool here. This question says which AWS service can be used to generate alerts based on estimated monthly bill. So this has to be, uh, I mean, if if it was budgets, you know, this has to be budgets. But since budgets are not there, because whenever, even if you have tried to use a free tier account, you must have created a used AWS budget to set a budget of say $10 or $20. And the, based on that, you will get an email alert. But it is asking you here in, in the absence of budget, you can use CloudWatch. CloudWatch, uh, it tracks the metrics and you can use CloudWatch for this purpose. So config is used to uh, log what are the configuration changes you have done to the resource over the span of time. So it's a very different purpose. It will not send you emails. X-Ray is used for uh, monitoring and auditing your production systems. CloudTrail is used for logging the whatever metrics you are creating. It will create the logs. But CloudWatch can be used to, uh, you know, based on the metrics data, you, it can send alerts or it, it can activate SNS to send the alerts. So this is the closest option in, in the absence of AWS budgets. So you can see in this documentation, there is a whole tutorial on this, how you can set up CloudWatch events rule to receive email notifications for pipeline state changes. Hence, this gives you a justification for the answer. So option B looks to be correct. Let's look at this one, which Amazon EC2 pricing model offers the most significant discount when compared to on-demand instances. So let's look at the options. So in a nutshell, if there is an on-demand instance, then only reserve instance provides you a most significant discount. Okay, uh, spot instances can provide the discount, but then it will, uh, there will be interruptions. If you have an uninterruptible workload, then you should not use spot instances, but there is no spot instance here. All four options have reserved instances mentioned here. So the first option says partial upfront reserve instances. So you are doing a partial upfront, so it will not be very cheap. All upfront reserve instances for one year, yes, this will be cheap. All upfront reserve instances for three years, this will be even cheaper. No upfront reserve instances for three years. That means all our operational costs. If you're not making upfront, then that is a costly. So D is a costly option. Then A is the second costly option. And then B is the third costly. And fourth is the cheapest option. So we should go with option C. So this option C is the cheapest option. Which of the following is the responsibility of AWS? So option A suggests setting up AWS identity and access management. So this is your responsibility as a customer. Physically destroying storage media at the end of life, this is AWS responsibility because you would not have access to storage media. So you cannot destroy it. Patching guest operating system, this is your responsibility. When you use Linux, suppose you have created a EC2 instance with a Linux as an operating system, and six months down the line, you have to apply a patch, then it is your responsibility. AWS will not automatically do the patch upgrades. Configuring security settings for EC2 instances so in the security group whatever ips you want to provide access and etc this setting you have to do it aws will not do it for you hence b is the correct option 
Let's look at this one. Which of the following is an advantage of using uh, AWS? First says AWS audits user data. No, AWS automatically will not audit the user data. It's your data. They have no uh, no job to audit it. So this is not uh, correct. A is wrong. B data is automatically secure. No data is not automatically secure. You as a customer will have to decide how to make it more secure. You have to decide what is the security group settings you have to do. Who will access this data using IAM roles and privileges, etc. It is you who will decide. So this is not an advantage of AWS. See, there is no guessing on capacity needs. Uh, <clears throat> yes, there is no guessing uh, on the capacity needs. So capacity needs, what do you mean by capacity need? It means like uh, today you need uh, 300 GB, but tomorrow you may need one terabyte. So there is no guessing means <clears throat> yeah. It, it is not fixed. No guessing means it is fixed. You already always know that it is 300 gigabyte. That is not the case. That is not an advantage of AWS. It is flexible. D says AWS manages compliance needs. Yes, they manage the compliance needs through um, compliance reports. They are HIPAA compliant and etc. They store these artifacts in AWS artifact. Hence, option D is the correct answer. Which AWS service would a customer use with a static website to achieve lower latency and high transfer speeds? So the keywords here are low latency and high transfer speeds. Whenever we talk about this keyword, it is always CloudFront. If you check CloudFront, what it says is it uh, it is a fast content delivery network for it provides low latency and high transfer speeds. This is the right answer. But let's look at other options. Lambda is a function, so it makes uh, your uh, serverless functions. You can use Lambda to process your data, but it only uh, it has a processing uh, time constraint of 15 minutes. After that, it auto kills. So that is not an answer for this. <coughs> Amazon DynamoDB Accelerator. This provides you caching capabilities for your DynamoDB databases, but it is not uh, an answer for low latency, high transfer speeds. Uh, hence, CloudFront is the right answer. Let's look at this one. Which services manage and automate application deployments on AWS? So, what are the keywords? Automate the application deployment. So, whenever we talk about automation of application deployments, Cloud Formation is the default. It is infrastructure as a code. So if you see this, this is AWS cloud formation. It speeds up the cloud provisioning and with infrastructure as a code. And this provides a easy way for model of collection of related AWS and third party resources, provision them quickly and consistently and manage them throughout their life cycles. This is treating it as infrastructure as a code. The option suggests to use two options. I mean, two, uh, there are two answers. So first one is uh, cloud formation. That is first. Let's look at other options, uh, AWS code commit. So code commit is a fully managed source control service tool. So you will have different versions of uh, your sources and it can be used for automating the deployment through GitHub based repositories. It is similar to GitHub and it makes it easy for the teams to collaborate on code in securely in secure and highly scalable ecosystems. So this is this looks to be our potential answer, but let's still scan data pipeline. So data pipeline, this is what it does. It, it is a web service that helps you reliably process and move data between different compute and storage services. Okay, so this is very different to our answer. It is not used for deployment of applications and services, and it is not used for automation of application deployments. Let's look at Elastic Beanstalk. So if you see Beanstalk, Beanstalk says it is an easy to use service for deploying and scaling web applications and services which has been developed with Java and, and here we get this second answer. This answer is better than code commit. Hence, we got our two options, Elastic Beanstalk and Cloud Formation. Let's look at this op this question. A user wants guidance on possible savings when mi migrating from on-premises to AWS. Which tool be, should be used for this purpose? So it is asking for savings. It, is, it wants to evaluate how much on-premises will cost, how much AWS will cost. So it already knows how much on-premises will cost, but it wants to know whether there will be a possible savings if they move to AWS. Then the only tool that is used for this purpose is total cost of ownership, TCO calculator. So AWS uh, well architected tool. It is a tool which compares your workloads. Uh, I mean, it, it, the state of your workloads and it will compare it with the latest architectural best practices and it will tell you where it is uh, missing. So it compares it with the well architected framework. Okay. It is not used for uh, understanding the cost savings. So uh, hence D is wrong. Cost Explorer and Budgets. Budgets is used if you want alerts. If you are crossing a certain set of budget, if you have set $100 as your budget and if it crosses, it will get an email. It's a very different purpose. And Cost Explorer just gives you the overall cost of your usage once you are on cloud. It will not give you an estimate of how much will it cost if you are on cloud. Cost Explorer only works if you have once you have migrated to cloud and started using cloud. So this brings us to the end of this video. Uh, this is the end of part nine. What I would say is please like my videos if you, if you find it helpful and please subscribe to my channel. Whenever you are trying to uh, do some comprehensive study, it is always better to go through the FAQs. If you see this website, there are FAQs and there are um, main description of the tool. So in, in this case, AWS well architected, there's a main description of the tool. It gives you the benefits with the diagram and etc. And then 
uh, you can go to FAQ and understand more details. For this exam, it is relatively easy. <clears throat> so only few things about FAQ will will help. But for, for future exams like Solution Architect and etc., you will have to go through this FAQs in detail. That's it from this side, uh, and I'll upload some more videos. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.